lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim. Let us not be ashamed to ask the good Lord to walk with us in every situation, whatever you may be going through. Don't be ashamed to ask the good Lord to walk with you. Mm-hmm. Walk with me.
Walk with me. Praise the Lord. I want the Lord to walk with me. Welcome to the Just For You podcast with Minister Michelle Wright. Well, listen, if this is your first time listening to the Just For You podcast, I want to share with you what Just For You is all about. The Just For You podcast is designed to encourage, empower, and engage listeners to thrive spiritually and naturally, utilizing biblical principles. Just For You will reveal truths embedded in the Holy Bible to illustrate kingdom living, soul winning, compassion, and strategy to serve mankind, making a difference locally and globally. Just For You will allow listeners to hear teachings that are applicable, guests that will inspire and opportunities for serving more effectively in the home, church, school, community, and marketplace. Well, listen, I am super, super excited to be here on today. Listen, do you realize I say this every week, but I want you to really focus in and put your minds on this. Do you Oh, what a privilege and an honor it is to be alive and well. Do you know what an honor and a privilege it is just to be able to wake up and breathe? And listen, all of us are going through a lot in this season and time due to what we've heard called the coronavirus and COVID-19. But listen, I want to encourage you today to let you know there's nothing new under the sun, that the Lord has everything under control. If you will just understand that today was made for you long before you were ever born. When you were seated in your mother's womb, he saw this day and he said, hey, you are going to be here. Why? Because there is purpose yet inside of you. I want you to be encouraged and to let you know many of us have had loved ones, family, and friends that have been attacked by this disease and other things that may have happened in illnesses in their lives, and some have gone on to be with the Lord. I want to encourage you on today to let you know how much the Lord loves you. He cares about where you are. He cares about what's on your mind, and he has great things in store for you. So I want you to think about today as you go through this evening, as you're listening to the podcast, that there is something yet wonderful about what he's getting ready to do in the land. Everything isn't all bad. Everything isn't all working against us. It is, in fact, according to Romans 8 and 28, for the believer, it says all things, and we know all things work together for good to those who love God and are the called according to his purpose. So the question is, what is our purpose? And again, our condolences, our love and compassion to those who are losing loved ones, who've lost loved ones to the COVID-19, we want you to know we're praying for you. Before we go into our Um, exhortation for this afternoon and evening. We want you to be assured and affirm that God is with you. Will you join me in prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask that you will lead, guide, and direct us. It is your podcast. We yield ourselves to you to have your divine will and way. 
Thank you for the guest on today, God. Would you bless each and every one of them? Thank you for our producer and CEO, Kimmy Robinson. Thank you for guest Tara Williams and for our pastor, Jose Aguayo, and for Councilwoman Ella Jones. God, would you keep your hands upon them and their families? Bless our Elation family. And most of all, God, I ask that you come and touch every listener listening in on today's podcast. Would you make know the heaviness in their heart. You know the joy that they have. We thank you today for all things, and we bless your holy name. We are encouraged. We are strengthened. We are lifted up by your word, and we say, have your divine will in way. Forgive us all of our sins, O oh God, those thoughts, those ways, the deeds we've done, things that we didn't even know we did that displeased you. Please forgive us of our sins, and we we will forgive others. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining me in prayer. Get your pens, get your pad. Let's talk about some great news in the Word of God. We're going to be studying today from Psalms 139. Listen, I want you to know that, again, there's so much that's been going on, but I need you to know we are fearfully faithful. Come on. Somebody said, what does that mean? How is that going together? Fear and faithfulness. Fear and faithfulness. Well, let me explain to you. Let's study in the book of 139 of Psalm, and it reads as such, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Not know. If you look in your Bible, you'll find these words, K-N-O-W-N, thou hast known me. Thou knowest my down sitting, and thou knowest um, my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. But there is not a word in my tongue. But lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there. Shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Hallelujah. I'm getting excited. Let me calm myself down. Hallelujah. You know it's me right well. Hallelujah. Jesus, I'm excited. My substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest part of the earth, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written which in countenance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. 
How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Surely, surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with a perfect hatred. I count them as mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Well, listen, what is so wonderful about this passage? It is personified. Just as I read it, when you read it in your Bible, it becomes personified for you. I want you to know there is nothing going on in this day and time that God is not fully aware of. He was aware long before COVID-19 came because it says here in the word, no matter what age you are, that he saw you in your mother's womb. Listen, he knew all about what was coming, how strategically it had to be planned. He knew all about our existence. What would we be doing at this moment? What would we be doing at this moment? What would we be doing at this moment? He knew about it. He saw it long before we were born. And guess what? Because we are in position here, it means this to me, that the word is forever true. He said we were fearfully and wonderfully made. That is some good news to me. Why? Because when we think about how powerful it is to have an existence, to know that we are here for a purpose, it allows us to understand how great God really is. I remember reading, and we will cover a little of that today. You remember in the book of Hebrews, when the Lord began to talk about um, faith, he talked about now faith, now faith, now faith. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Why is that important? Because there's a whole lot going on now that we need to have some faith for. Not faith for tomorrow, but faith for today. Faith for right now. Faith for what is to come. Faith because we recognize we were created by him for purpose. Then it goes on to say, For by the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Hallelujah. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained a witness that he was righteous. God testifying I just taught on this not too long ago. Can you imagine God testifying of your gifts? Can you imagine him saying how righteous you were? And by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. But before his translation, He had this testimony, come on, y'all, that he pleased God. Last scripture of Hebrews, Hebrews 11, 6. Read along with me. But without faith, possible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I don't know about you, but when I was younger, we used to play a game called hide and seek. The object of the game was to go scatter around, and whoever was looking for you were to find you. 
And listen, when they found you, I don't know about how disappointed some of you may have felt. We didn't want to be found because we were hiding. But the Bible lets us know if you seek him genuinely, earnestly, heartfeltly, the Bible lets us know that he will reward you. But the first thing is you got to believe that he is. So this I will make as a disclaimer, as a Christian believer, as a person that has a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, one that has accepted the calling and the lifestyle of believing by faith that he is Lord, the Bible lets us know, according to the word of God in Romans 10, 9 and 10, we have to believe unto righteousness. And confess with our mouths. Believe in our heart. Confess with our mouths that he is Lord. In today's time, so many people are going through. So many people are concerned and worried about what tomorrow holds. When you enter into the family of God, there is an assurance he will take care of you. I want you to know, if you don't know him today in the pardon of your sins, it's not too late. You can get to know him right now. According to the word of God, you can believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he is Lord and thou shalt be saved. I want you to be, I mean, intentional about your positioning and your faith and spirituality. In this time, it is needed more than ever. Our children are watching to see what's going to happen. Had you ever thought we'd get to a place where we had no children in school, no adults in school, in college? Had you ever thought we would get to a place where the church doors would be closed? I want you to be assured and confirmed today. As we all have been hearing and seeing, we'll get through this together. But I don't want to get through anything without my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I choose to believe he is my way. I choose to believe through faith it's going to be all right. Not because I just said it's all right, because the word just told me it's going to be all right. He said that if we diligently seek him, he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Are you seeking him today? Are you putting your trust in everything that he's given you that he is going to optimize it and maximize it for his purpose? But here's the thing, you can't do it without him. We can do a lot of things in our flesh, but the word of God lets us know, as a believer, what we're fearfully and wonderfully made. He knows all about our sitting down and our rising up. He knows all about our thoughts. He knows afar off what we're thinking. He knows everything about us. So when we're connected to him, how awesome is it? That when you've ever been in trouble, you have a hiding place. Isn't it awesome that if you've ever thought about, man, I've messed up so bad, and maybe it seems like everyone has turned their back on you, I want you to know there is a God who will love you, who will wrap his arms around you, who will accept you as his very own. You just have to believe. You just have to repent. And ask him to teach you how to live a better life. He'll send people across your path, even with the church doors closed. Be encouraged on today. Please be encouraged and know that he is God. I'm so excited to know that. And I want you to be encouraged with that. I want you to be encouraged that help is on the way. I'm sorry, someone's phone is unmuted. Could you mute your phone for me? Thank you. So I want to encourage you to continue to look to the hills from which cometh your help, recognizing all of your help coming from the Lord thy God. 
Isn't that great news? Isn't it great news to know you have a shelter, a safe place when things are chaotic, that things will work out just for you? I'm excited to know that. I'm excited to know that help is on the way. And with that, We have to understand God has created so many people on assignment and with purpose to do what he's asking them to do in this hour. On today, we have guests that are going to bless you and inspire you. And we're going to start our interview with a young lady who has been so powerful and she has so much to share about what God has given her to do in the person of Tara Williams. Are you on the line, Tara? All righty. Hello. I'm sorry, are you on the line, Tara? Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you now. How are you on this evening? I am well. How are you? I am doing Hello? Hello? Thank you so very much. We're here. We can hear you. Thank you so very much for being on the Just For You podcast. Tell us a little bit about, for those that are listening in who don't know who you are, who you are and what you do and what God is placing on your heart. Okay. Um, Well, my name is Tara M. Williams. I'm also known as Tea Time with Tara. Um, I am a, for short, I am a life coach, but I am a Mm goal-setting expert and accountability partner. I focus on Mm -hmm. identity, direction, and accountability. I am a Mm three-time published author, Mm -hmm. um, and those books are available on Amazon.com. And with Tea Time with Tara, that is my ministry and leadership training where I focus on business and Bible basics. Wonderful. So tell us about your Tea Time with Tara. How and when did God give you this concept? And what led you to believe that was needed for those that are in the marketplace or in the church? Okay. Well, Tea Time with Tara and my my business, um, the company Stalk Your Destiny, all started while I was um, in the midst of a bad marriage, and I was also seeking Mm -hmm. healing for um, child sexual abuse. And so during Mm -hmm. that time, and I I was also a mother, um, I have stair-step kids. So Mm -hmm. um, I had just, um, I think I had just had my third my son, my third son, who's my youngest, um, mm-hmm. in 2014. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I had lost my identity within the marriage and mm-hmm. within, you know, seeking healing. And during mm-hmm. that time, um, that's when God was dealing with me and, you know, working on healing me. So I figured with, in terms of tea time with Tara, if I had five minutes a day, um, and I would use that five minutes to where I would pop a cup of hot water, cup of water in the microwave for three minutes, and I would go take a shower mm-hmm. while that was in the mm-hmm. microwave, and then I would come mm-hmm. and drink the tea burning hot. And so if mm-hmm. I had just five minutes a day, that was a good day. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. that five minutes grew to 15 minutes, and I would use the rest of the mm-hmm. time to take a longer shower and then post an encouraging post on Instagram. And then Mm -hmm. God grew that 15 minutes to an hour, which I call an hour of power. And Mm -hmm. so with that, I've gotten up to consistently three hours a day. But um, at some points I had gotten five hours a day. I still do sometimes get five hours a day in, but Mm -hmm. that's my time with God. And so from that, Mm -hmm. um, with, with my business growing and he had done that with me behind the scenes for an entire year, And then he told me Mm. to start doing it with the community, um, just sharing stories of what I was going through personally and how he was speaking Mm -hmm. through those with his scriptures and stuff like that. I didn't know I was a teacher till I started talking (laughs) and doing tea time with Tara. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I heard yeah. you say something that's so very critical, especially in these times. You know, we have everybody who's in their homes. Um, most people are fretting, and some people don't know. But how important it was to hear you say about self-care, not only taking a long shower, but just caring about yourself. And I heard you say something else. You said that you were in a uh, difficult marriage or a, a marriage that ended. But listen, let me say this. Um, how important was it for you to regain who you were in the Lord? And can you say to that woman who might be in a marriage like that but need to hear that there is hope for them? Can you explain to them how good God has been to you in order for you to be able to be who you are today? Yes. Um, And so within the marriage, um, the thing that one, first of all, I lost my identity, so God was working on me to find mm-hmm. my own identity again. Mm-hmm. Um, but as a wife, um, I stayed in position as a wife. Mm-hmm. Um, I had mm-hmm. devotionals, uh, power of a praying mm-hmm. wife, um, mm-hmm. all kinds of things. And so I remained loving towards him, mm-hmm. even on days when he was mm-hmm. not um, lovable. Mm-hmm. And I did not seek out divorce. God had to let me know mm-hmm. three years later that it was okay to sign the divorce papers because he was divorcing mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I would just mm-hmm. encourage those women to, you know, do as God leads, because God's not always mm-hmm. leading you to mm-hmm. divorce. Um, and God, mm-hmm. he spoke reconciliation over my marriage before we divorced. Mm-hmm. So even when mm-hmm. dealing with that, you know, you wonder, well, how am I supposed to reconcile with someone when you tell me to go forward and divorce? But the reconciliation mm-hmm. is about the ministry of reconciliation. Mm-hmm. And that's about us both coming back to our place in the Lord. And so the encouragement for it is that if you're going through right now, um, man or woman in a marriage, you know, if you're going through Mm -hmm. um, this to remember to act in love because God is love and remain in your position because as we go forward to Mm -hmm. please God, um, we can, you know, we can't control what our spouse perceives from us, but we can control what we Mm -hmm. put out. And at the end of it, my ex-husband, you know, says that I was a good wife and Mm -hmm. I didn't deserve those things that he did to mm-hmm. me. So I'm, I can never be discredited, discredited mm-hmm. for, um, I'm sorry, I'm saying that wrong. He cannot discredit me for my role as a wife mm-hmm. in that. So, mm-hmm. you know, follow the position and under, under God's lead and bury yourself, you know, in the Lord, but don't mm-hmm. abandon your duties or your role as a husband or wife. Mm-hmm. How powerful that is. Thank you for sharing. And then I want to ask you about stalking your destiny. Tell us a little bit about your business, how it, I know that we know you are a life coach, you you have children, you know, how do you balance it all? And not only that, now you have this company. Isn't it amazing how when we go through something, God has a way of birthing something new out of us that we can see his hand upon it, just like in Psalm 139. Isn't that awesome? Yes, it is. It's, it's amazing, actually. Actually, um, I let people know all the time that nothing that I do in my business was my idea. Um, None of Mm -hmm. it was my idea. I have a a line of planners. That was not my idea. The books, Mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, they're not my words per se. They are things God Mm -hmm. allowed me to experience in his words. Mm -hmm. And so um, I Mm -hmm. started the business again. The business and the ministry started at the same time. And that was because Mm -hmm. when I lost my identity, I had to find my identity. I had to Mm -hmm. um, be, figure out what direction I was going in after that. And I had to be accountable for getting there. Mm -hmm. And so God showed me Mm -hmm. me, which was, I am, Mm -hmm. uh, I have OCD, which is an anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. with that, I'm very, you know, organizational. I'm very focused on Mm organizing, you know, organization. Um, and mm-hmm. things like that. I'm good with, with putting people's things into, you know, structurally um, mm-hmm. organizing mm-hmm. it. And so mm-hmm. with that, that's how I developed my planners. I was trying to prove to my ex-husband that 
that I was doing something as a stay-at-home wife with my children. So I started my mm-hmm. line of planners just trying to prove to him that we worked. You know, we do things at home. Mm-hmm. And when he no longer cared mm-hmm. after, like, day two, I continued with that process. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. um, God just built up on that. So as a coach, I focus on identity, direction, and accountability. And people that mm-hmm. feel like they're all mm-hmm. over the place, I let them know, mm-hmm. for one, you're not alone. You know, and for two, you may be trying to do what other people want you to do versus what God needs you to do or where you're purposed. Um, so with Stop Your Destiny, mm-hmm. we're connecting you to your destiny one step at a time. And that has to do with your mm-hmm. identity in Christ, who God called you to be and what role you have to play um, in the lives of others. Wow, you have said a mouthful there, and I thank you for your gifts and who you are in the body of Christ and understanding that even though we go through some heartache and pain, I love the fact that you never gave up. I love the fact that you held on not only for yourself, but for your husband who didn't understand uh, what God was doing in and through you and for the generation coming behind you, which are your children. Because our children are like sponges, aren't they? They watch, they look, and when they see you in position doing what God has called you to do, it is an honor to them. And I know especially right now, while they're out of school, uh, things are going on with our educational systems, what a blessing it is to have a mom like you so organized at home and um, be able to help them. Because I've constantly heard so many reports about how much work the children are getting now versus them when they were in school. So God bless you on balancing it all out. That is such a blessing. Tara, tell us, if someone was listening and they said, hey, I want to uh, get in contact with you, I want you to give your information, but what were you going to say? Uh, well, I was going to say, my children are actually homeschooled. We hired a teacher um, two and a half years ago, oh, wow. so their schedule actually mm-hmm. never changed during this time. Wonderful. They are still happily in homeschool. They still go to their teacher five days a week. But their mm. their transition with this, all they do is they know what's going on, but they have not been yes. affected by it. So what made you decide to homeschool your children versus sending them to formal education or formal education? I sent them to um, an early childhood center um, for mm-hmm. about two years. And in that time, I noticed mm-hmm. that... Um, First of all, the school district was not up to par for my standard. And then um, with my children have special needs. All three of them have special mm-hmm. needs. And so um, okay. with that, they they wouldn't be getting, as they would go further, they wouldn't be getting the attention that they needed um, or the help that they needed. Mm-hmm. And so it was best, like I had a teacher sit in an IEP meeting and tell us that my son was not going to get what he needed out of her class because she wasn't going to, she didn't care. She said she had too many students Mm -hmm. to care for the needs of one Mm -hmm. um, student. Mm -hmm. And so at that point I said, okay, we're done here. We're not going to be at this school. And during the Mm -hmm. homeschooling, um, like I said, we hired a retired school teacher. Um, Mm -hmm. And so that school teacher can give all three of them the one-on-one uh, attention that they they needed, and she has done a tremendous mm-hmm. job. Even their pediatrician says, you know, keep them with her. Wonderful, wonderful. That is such a blessing to have that option, and thank you for sharing that as well. So, listen, if someone wanted to get in contact with you to say, listen, I have this business, as you said, I'm all over the place, I really need Tara's help. Yeah. Tell the listening audience how they can get in contact with you and find out more about Tea Time with Tara. Okay. You can um, Google Tara M. Williams. That's Tara like Sarah with a T. Um, You can Mm -hmm. Google Stalk Your Destiny. And I'm saying Google because Mm -hmm. all of my different platforms will come up. I am on Twitter, Mm -hmm. um, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Uh, my email mm-hmm. address is tea time with Tara at gmail.com mm-hmm. or stalk mm-hmm. your destiny 
at gmail.com. And then uh, my phone number, I always give my phone number out, and it's funny because nobody actually calls, but my phone number is (laughs) area code 225-405-1086. It is a Louisiana number, but I am in St. Louis, Mm -hmm. um, but I do have clients in other states. Mm-hmm. Well, that is wonderful. So, again, they can contact you, and that's T-A-R-A-H, correct, Williams, that they can look yes, up? Yes, ma'am. All yes. right. And look up T. T isn't just the letter T. It is T-E-A. Is that correct, T time with Tara? Yes, T-E-A. Mm-hmm. At gmail.com. Uh huh. Yes. At gmail dot com. I just wanted to correct that because someone may have said, "Oh, T, just the regular T," and I just wanted them to find you. Okay. So I am so excited oh, yes, about you being here today. And thank you so much for your time today. It's such a pleasure to yes. speak with you. I pray that the Lord will bless you in all that you are doing, and that He will increase what you have been given for the kingdom's sake. May God bless you and keep you, Tara. And thank you for being on just for you today. Thank you so much. All righty. Well, listen, you just heard from Tara Williams. We're so excited for a woman of God doing a great work, using all of her gifts and talents for the kingdom of God. But listen, as you know, we just made mention there's been so much going on in our society, in our communities with this COVID-19. And one of the biggest things that has been talked about is testing and testing sites. So on today's podcast, we are privileged and honored to have Pastor Jose Aguayo and Councilwoman Ella Jones to give us more insight about what's going to be happening in our city and how you can get information to help you be safe and to learn more about what to do. So if we can, Pastor Jose Aguayo and Councilwoman Ella Jones, are you on the line? Hello. 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 Okay, I hear you now. I can hear you now. How are you today? Hello. Oh, great. I'm so glad to hear you guys. It's wonderful for you being on. Thank you for being on just for you today. It's a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, Michelle. Thank you. Well, listen, we are so excited. Councilwoman Ella Jones, are you on the line? Okay, we'll get her piped in. I'm not sure quite what's going on. But listen, I know that all over our city, people are frantic. They're trying to learn more about COVID-19. I would like for you, if you could, Pastor Aguayo, we know we've posted a flyer telling us there's going to be a testing site. And would you explain to us, first of all, who you are, uh, your role, and then also explain to us about the COVID-19 testing site is going to be in the North County area. Okay, well, I am Pastor Jose Aguayo. I am the Billy Graham chaplain over Ferguson and the police chaplain over Ferguson, Missouri. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was Mm -hmm. a great need, and the councilwoman contacted me last week and said, you know, we have a situation Mm -hmm. here with testing sites. And Mm -hmm. I said, well, we definitely have to do something about it. She went ahead and started moving on it. And it's become mm-hmm. a blessing. We opened yesterday for the first time, and today was our second day. Mm-hmm. And it's located at 800 Chambers Road in Ferguson, Missouri. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's available from 6 in the morning to 9 in the morning. And if you call mm-hmm. the number 314-735-0220, you can just call and make an appointment to come in and get yourself tested for the virus. It takes 48 mm-hmm. hours for that virus to come back from the testing. And if you do test mm-hmm. positive, the doctor, Dr. Khan, will contact you. And if and if you cannot be there for some reason, you call that number, mm-hmm. and someone will come. The doctor will come to your home, or someone will come and mm. get you to take you there. We try to make it mm. as easy as possible, because our people are suffering the most, as you know. Yeah. And it's become quite evident by the reports, uh, by the media, and everything else. 
So we want to make this as mm-hmm. easy as possible for everyone to be able to receive the services that they require. Mm-hmm. And and also with that being said, I heard you say it takes 48 hours. There's a doctor on site, and then you have the opportunity, if you can't be there, for them to come to your home. What an awesome privilege that is for people to be able to get the type of testing that's needed. Now, let me ask you this. I hear a lot of hearsay about what the test incurs. So what does the test itself incur? for people if they have to come for that? Well, they will receive a swab testing, which will be mm-hmm. you know, to the nose. They put a swab, it's like a Q-tip, and it's mm-hmm. administered by the doctor or a registered nurse. And this okay. is sent, and everyone is in gowns. I mean, everything is very high-tech and very much to protect not only the recipient, but the those volunteers mm-hmm. that are there to do the work as well. And okay. the testing, like I said, it takes only a few minutes. It is sent out, and mm-hmm. it, um, if it re- does return with a negative, everything mm-hmm. is fine. But if there is a positive, the doctor will be in contact mm-hmm. with them uh, as soon as possible. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. And could you tell us a little bit about your role? I know that you mentioned you are the chaplain with the health could you talk a little bit about your role and what the look like for a city and in your face? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the last part of the show. Oh, I was saying, could you tell us a little bit about your role as a chaplain and uh, what that role is as it identifies with your faith? Well, basically, I am a uh, the, the senior police chaplain, the chief police chaplain for the city of Ferguson. Uh, I'm, I'm, so I'm, not, I'm so sorry, Pastor Aguayo. I'm not sure if there is still a lot of music in the background, and we're trying to um, uh, get that music down some so we can hear you. Um, and then we're going to move to Councilman Allo uh, Jones. Um, but could you okay. explain again? I'm so sorry. I couldn't hear you. I apologize. Uh, no problem. I, uh, I am the Billy Graham chaplain, like I can mention earlier. But I'm also the chief mm-hmm. chap, police chaplain for uh, the, the police department in Ferguson. Uh, one of my mm-hmm. duties, of course, is to make sure that we have the chaplains, training the chaplains, and making sure they are there, ready to serve and to help the community and the police officers and the fire department mm-hmm. as well, and the entire city of Ferguson. Mm-hmm. As a Billy Graham chaplain, mm-hmm. I, uh, I respond as needed to any emergencies in the world. Mm-hmm. Actually, I just got back. Mm-hmm. A couple of months ago, as you know, from the Bahamas, when they had the hurricane, that was very horrific. And about two, I don't know if you're aware of this, but two weeks, uh, two months ago, a month ago, I uh, returned from Puerto Rico where they had the earthquakes, uh, which is also mm. a very traumatizing period. Uh, but mm-hmm. it's a blessing to be able to serve God. I'm here to, at his beck and call, to do what he asked me to do mm-hmm. whenever he asked me to do it. Uh, if he mm. says jump, I don't act how high, I just jump. And it's just a privilege and an mm-hmm. honor to be able to serve his people when the need is there. Yes. Yes. And we'd like to know, are there any programs that you'd like to know outside of the COVID-19 that you'd like to share with the community um, in your role as a chaplain uh, that you'd like them to be aware of? Is there any other information you'd like to share before we uh, move towards uh, Councilwoman Ella Jones? I had a little trouble understanding what you were saying, Michelle. I'm so sorry. Uh, we have a lot of stuff no on problem. the line. I was asking. Yeah, I was asking, can you hear me okay now? Yes, I see you much better. Okay. I was asking, are there any other programs or information you'd like to give the listening audience on today as it refers to your role as the chaplain or in your ministry that you'd like to share with the listening audience? Well, one of the other ministries that I have, Michelle, is I, I oversee the Adopt the Block program in Ferguson, which mm-hmm. uh, since Michael Brown, I've been there since the Michael Brown incident, and since then we started Adopt the Block, which we go door to door after mm-hmm. training the churches, and they adopt one block, and they go to that one block door to door, asking and seeing what people need. And I train them basically mm-hmm. in basic chaplaincy, basically just to listen, 
and be there to be a representative mm-hmm. of Jesus to these people. Not mm-hmm. to speak about mm-hmm. Jesus, but to show them what Jesus Come is on. from their hearts. Mm-hmm. So they can see mm-hmm. what it's all about. And it's, a, and it's a walk and not a talk. And after a few months, Amen. a few weeks actually, they begin to ask you, what, a, what is this all about? And that's when we can begin the discipleship program with the people. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think it's more important than anything else. You know, anybody can give numbers mm-hmm. that somebody has received Christ, but have you discipled yeah. that person so they can have a relationship mm-hmm. with Christ? That's the difference. Mm-hmm. And that is very key because we recognize now that the church doors are closed, um, nothing against the church or, you know, sometimes people have gotten it in their heart and mind that salvation is attending a regular service. Uh, It's a routine service. And when they go home, it's a different story because the tools that were utilized were so dependent on the physical building. But when we come into relationship, it makes all the difference in the world. And it's helps us to sustain in this time. So I thank God for the Adopt the Block program because people will not only be discipled, they'll gain a personal revelation of who our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is to maintain their living, whether they're in a physical building or not. And then they gain relationship with those that are discipling them. So you can't go wrong with that. We thank you so much. So if the listening audience would like to learn more about um, the COVID, would you give that number again for the testing site as well as give the information for the adopter block in case someone's listening and like to learn more about either or. Okay, for the COVID-19 testing, it's 314-735-0220. I'll repeat, it's 314-735-7220. If they want to reach me, they can reach me by calling uh, 314-368-1642. That's 314-368-1642. We're here to service and to be uh, available. Amen, amen. And as a, it's always a pleasure to uh, cross paths with you. We know how much you love the Lord, and you are a powerful man of God, serving God's people. And we so thank you for all that you do. We know during the unrest of Ferguson, there's been so much has gone on, but when we have Uh, boots on the ground and people that are in position that are serving through transition, it means a lot. And I just want to commend you on the work that you're doing. And may God bless you for all that you're doing, not only in our wonderful city, but also those that God assigns you to. May God bless you. I thank you very much. And it's always an honor to be uh, talk to you and to be a part of what the things that you're involved with. It's always a blessing. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Well, Councilman Ella Jones, are you on the line? Hello? Hello. Hello. How are you on today? How are you? I am great. God is good. Yes. I am so excited to have you on. Um, I understand from Pastor Aguayo that you are very key in um, this piece that is for the COVID-19 testing center. So we'd like for you to introduce yourself to those that don't know you. I don't know who that would be. I'm just teasing. I don't know. But I do know for the listening audience, we would love for you to introduce yourself and let them know uh, your role with the city of Ferguson as well well as that you are a woman of God. Hello, everyone, and I would like to say, Michelle, (laughs) thank you for giving me the opportunity to share today. Uh, My name is Ella Jones. I am a 40-year resident of the city of Ferguson. I have been serving Mm -hmm. as a council person for Ward 1 for the last five years. And mm-hmm. my goal in in this life, if, and I mm-hmm. share this with people, my goal in this life is to serve people because that's what yeah. God has called me to do. Before then, I mm-hmm. passed 22 years in an African Methodist 
Episcopal Church. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What a blessing. What a blessing. Well, I certainly know that your heart is for God and his people. I know that you're very actively involved in the community. And, you know, that means a lot because that is the role of Jesus. When we read in the word, we didn't hear and just see him in the synagogue teaching and preaching. He was amongst the people, giving them life through the word and being able to show them what Christianity is about and I thank you and as they say the word is public servant when we go into office but certainly there is a mandate on your life to do the things that you are doing well tell us a little bit about what's going on with you and some of the things I know we're going to talk about the COVID-19 we heard the information about the testing site Uh, is there anything specific you want the listening audience to know in regards of the COVID-19 testing site on Chambers Road? Well, like Pastor Jose said, he and I shared a conversation, and it pierced my heart. And I asked yeah. God to show me a way, and yeah. immediately a friend of mine, uh, Malik, came up, and I called him, and he started working on it. You know, it's wow. very, very important that we understand this is about people's lives. Mm-hmm. We've got mm-hmm. to save people. It's about saving yes, people. So yes, there's there's nothing I could have done other than do what I did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And we thank you for your heart and compassion for the people and those that are serving with you. Um, This is important, as you see, so many people and lives are being lost. And just to even have the availability for testing is an awesome, awesome blessing. Well, tell us a little bit more. I know there's some things that are going on with you. I understand that you are an Council, but also, are, is there anything else you want the listening audience to know about what you're doing at this time and where your plans are for the future? Well, what I'm doing at this time, I am candidate for mayor of the city of Ferguson, and okay. I'm running a clean campaign. It's very, very important <laughs> that people know that mm-hmm. my campaign is clean. I don't believe in negativity mm-hmm. because the God I serve is not negative. And if I have to mm-hmm. share something or do something negative towards you, that means that I am not of God. And when people see yes, me, mm-hmm. I want them to see God. So yes, that's ma'am. what I'm working on yes, in the campaign. And mm-hmm. just what, and mm-hmm. the key thing about it is my personal physician is the attending physician at the test site. Mm-hmm. So that's speaks a lot. That speaks volumes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And what a blessing it is. And also, I know, are you still serving with the Urban League and uh, in the community aspect? I'm still working with the Urban League about a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple of people needed food, and I said, why would I try mm-hmm. to feed one or two people when I can feed in mm-hmm. abundance? And I called Mike mm-hmm. McMillan at the Urban League, mm-hmm. and he sent tons mm-hmm. and tons of food to the mm-hmm. church with um, mm-hmm. Councilwoman Fran Griffin helped me. We were able to serve mm-hmm. eight municipalities plus all the people Wonderful. in Ferguson who wanted food, and yes. it's just phenomenal. Yes, yes. What a blessing it is. And that's the reason I wanted to ask you about that. There are so many things when we see our council that we don't know whether or not they're engrafted, if they're trying to help the people, because then this society, people are so used to people saying what they do. But I wanted to bring that out because I know your heart for people, and I know that you want to see these things engrafted. Also, I met you at the National. National Day of Prayer. That's where we first met, and so we recognize there's some things coming up again. Yes, 
Yes, in Ferguson. My husband and I met you in Ferguson years ago. So, And we were just together not too long ago, a couple of years ago, at the Urban League Salute to Women. And so we were at the same table. So what a blessing it was to be there with you. I want to just let you know as well, um, is there any new information on the National Day of Prayer that you are aware of? I forgot to talk with Pastor Aguero about that? Is there anything being planned for the area in Ferguson, or do you have other plans? I think Pastor Jose oh, can, will be spearheading that. Okay. Are you still on the line, Pastor Jose? I am, and of course we have to okay. be... Uh, can you hear me? First of all. Okay. We yes, have to be respectful of the regulations that are here. So we're going to be doing yes. the National Day of Prayer doing Zoom or by phone call conferencing. Okay. More, will, more information will be coming forth that we make it available, okay? Please, please let us know when you have that information. And we'll get it announced for you as well, okay? Yes, ma'am. I'll send it to you, and I'll also put it on uh, Facebook as well as sending a letter out uh, to the, the mailing list. Yes, not a problem. And, uh, Councilman, I'll... Uh, is there any information you'd like to leave with the listening audience? I know that you want them to be able to know that the testing site is available. Is there other any other ministerial information that you'd like to share with the listening audience? And if they are interested in finding out how to connect with you or if there's something that they'd like to do in the community there, uh, would you provide them with information for contact? Okay, people can reach me at 314-795-7295. I'm always available. If you leave a message, you can text me, You or either you can call me, and I will always answer. And mm. as I journey through these next couple of days and weeks, uh, with the testing side, every morning we have prayer. Mm -hmm. We open up with prayer mm -hmm. and we close with yeah. prayer because we realize mm -hmm. that it's only through Christ and what God is doing mm -hmm. that is going to sustain us and keep us healthy. Mm -hmm. And one thing I like mm -hmm. about Dr. Khan, she always checked to make certain that we had breakfast. And we had prayer. Yes. So, and I mm. desire everyone to pray for us, serve the mm -hmm. people. We desire your mm -hmm. prayer as we serve the people. Mm, mm, mm. That is a blessing. And we are going to actually close out with prayer on the podcast as we normally do. And we are going to include your prayer request in that prayer. Uh, again, I thank you all for being on the just for you today. Um, I am so excited. My heart is just overwhelmed with hearing all the wonderful things that God is doing. One other question before we pray, is there any stipulation, even though it's a testing site in the county, do you have to be a resident of the county before someone comes, or is it open to the general public? It's open to the general public. And talking with Dr. Okay. Khan today, the goal is to uh, test at least 50 people a day, but she shared today yeah. that it will not do us any good to try to do 100 tests because we will be ineffective. Mm -hmm. But we, when we yeah. get to 50 and there are other people who show up, she is going to educate them, she's going to talk with mm -hmm. them, and she's going to mm -hmm. give them some paperwork, some instructions, what to do when they go home, and they could come back the next day. So she's going to make certain mm -hmm. that everyone is seen. And if she, when we get to 50 and you become 52 or 53 or 51, she's still going to see mm -hmm. you. She's not going to test you, but she's going to educate mm -hmm. you, give you the paperwork, mm -hmm. and tell you how to treat yourself at home until you could come back the next day. 
Wonderful, wonderful. And what a privilege and a blessing that is. Well, we thank you again for being on the Just For You podcast on today with Minister Michelle Wright. And listen, we're going to close out. Listening audience, we strongly advise you you've heard anything in the broadcast and podcast today, please reach out to Tara Williams, Pastor Jose Aguayo, and Councilwoman Ella Jones. They've given you their information, which will be available by replay. So at this time, we are going to close out. We want you to know if this is your birthday month, we celebrate you and if you have a special something that's going on in your life, perhaps a new baby thing going on, we want you to know that we are celebrating you. We want you to also know if there's been a death or something else that has happened in your life that has brought you some sadness or maybe you're going through something. Here at Just For You, we are praying for you. And as always, we want you to know we are lifting up our country. We're lifting up our leadership. We're lifting up so many in prayer in this particular time, not just because of COVID-19, but because life keeps going on. Will you join me in a closing prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for our Lord and Savior. We honor you, God, for what you've done and what you're about to do in the lives of your people and for those crying out unto your name. Would you remember those that have loved ones that have gone on, families that are needing you right now with so many things that are chaotic and haywire, even in the midst of a homegoing celebration. Father, would you remember them today? We pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, for everyone afflicted today with any disease or any problem that is impairing their health. Would you look upon them? You are the divine healer. We're asking you to heal on today. Father, we lift up and pray for all leadership across our country, beginning with the president of these United States. States, beginning with all the government and all the pastors and leaders and community leaders and those that serve in any leadership capacity. Father, would you lead God and direct them? Would you give them wisdom, hope, and power for what they are called to do? I am praying, oh God, for today's guest. Would you bless the family of Tara Williams? Bless the family of Pastor Jose Aguayo. Bless the family of Councilwoman Ella Jones, God. Lord, we know you love them. We know you care about them. We know they're serving you. Keep your hand upon them. Protect them from all hurt, harm, and danger. If there's someone listening, God, who does not know you in the power of their sins, in their lifestyle, they want to change. They want to get to know you and yearn to be closer to you. God, would you remember them on this evening? Father, we thank you for the listeners. We thank you for the elation family. We thank you for our producer, Kimmy Robinson. God bless her family. We lift up our own brother Dre this evening and his family and the passing of the loved one, his mom. We're lifting up all of those that have issues, concerns, things that need to be handled by nobody but you. You are the way maker. You are our God. You are mighty. You are strong. And we just want to say thank you in advance. And Lord, we can't close out prayer without asking you to remember your servant, Michelle, her household, and all that we need and all that we trust you for, God. We believe you are a way maker, and we say thank you for healing my husband's body, God. Day by day seeing miracles. We just want to say thank you. And Lord, we just ask that you forgive us all of our sins and we will forgive others. Give us a heart to forgive God. If there are broken relationships on today, come in and heal, oh God. Give mercy and grace that families can be whole again, that people can come together as one, and we will thank you forevermore. You are worthy to be praised in the midst of all that we go through. You are God, and you are God alone. We love you, and we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And, Lord, remember every unspoken request. You know all about them all, and we will thank you forevermore. 
forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, listen, we Amen. Thank, you thank you for coming on and listening to the Just For You podcast with Minister Michelle Wright. Until next time, may the Lord bless you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And may you be filled with exuberant joy, even in the midst of what seems like it's a sorrowful time. Until next time, we love you. We're praying for you. And have a very blessed and beautiful day. This has been Minister Michelle Wright. And you can reach me on Facebook with M-I-C-H-E-L-E, Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T, or on LinkedIn with the same name. May God bless you. Until next time. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. I know he's the same. I know he's the same. Same, same. Oh, 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 he's the same yesterday. Every day it never changed. No, he's the same. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, yesterday, and forever. Oh, he's the same yesterday. Every day it never changed. No, he's the same. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, yesterday, and forever. You may think the Father and Son in my life is made a right. Yeah, yeah.